Traders Corner is proudly brought to you by IG, the specialists in CFD trading. Welcome to Traders Corner. As always, I'm joined by Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Garth, nice to have you in the studio. Hi, Julieta. Uh, and it's also good to finally find out how the option structure worked out um, after last week's futures closed out, because, of course, last week's show came before then. But I know before we get to that, you want to have a look at the top 40 and where we are at the moment after having had such a big day uh, last week. Yes, that's it. So we're going to quickly have a look at the top 40 as it sits, and then we'll show you where the close out uh, ended and, and how it paid off on that option structure. Fortunately, it worked out very nicely for us. If you look at the graph of the top 40 that's up on the screen at the moment, what you can see is that we, we pulled back to support recently at 45,300 and we've held that support very, very nicely. That is a support made by the prior lows that we saw in March earlier this year and then the previous peaks that we saw in November last year. And if, In fact, if you pull this graph further to the left, you'd see that there's even more inflection points which okay. come in at around about 45,300. So that it, it, nevertheless, that is a very, very important level for our market and it's no coincidence that we seem to have held that level and bounced up off it. Um, where we had our futures close out last week, Thursday, was at 45,815. Now, that's quite a good level in terms of our option structure, and we'll show you on the next slide where that all uh, ended. But what I quickly want to talk about on this slide before we move forward is the, is the action from here mm -hmm. on out. A lot of people are now looking at this as a potential right shoulder of a head and shoulders pattern beginning to form. And that might well be the case, but I don't know. We'll need to monitor the trading action in the next couple of weeks to see whether, in fact, that does indeed turn out to be the case. Often what I've found with these sort of things, they don't always work out the way you would expect. So I think we need to be alert to the fact that there might be the right shoulder of a head and shoulders forming here, but it also might not work out like that. I think we need to keep an open mind. Yeah. I mean, and the importance of the fact that it might be building a, a right shoulder is that uh, were it to play out as a head and shoulders pattern would, then you would have a drop and quite a quite a severe one. Yes, if this head and shoulders, if this was to pan out as a proper head and shoulders pattern and we were to form the right shoulder over here, that would mean a move probably up to about 47,500 on the top 40 and then it starts to roll over again. We would need to actually take out this neckline, this 45,300 okay. level. We'd need to start breaking below that in order to validate the head and shoulders structure. And if it did get validated, then yes, we've got a potential for another move down to the October, November, December lows of last year, which is around about 41,500, if indeed that does turn out to be the case. But as I say, I think at this stage we need to keep an open mind. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it might turn out to be a head and shoulders pattern. It might not. I think at this stage we're speculating. Sure. Okay, guys. so how did it all pan out for you last week? Because you had um, a lot of <laughs> optionality um, uh, as to last week's futures closeout, and I suppose I was really curious to see how it would all end out for you. Yeah, it worked well for us. So this is the payoff as we've described it so many times on the show. It was a combination of two put spread option structures then overlaid with a, a small long position on a top 40 CFD on IG market. So quite complicated. In fact, by far the most complicated structure we've ever done on this show. But nevertheless, you can see the payoff profile there, how it worked out for us. And the, the optimal level for us would have been at 44,500. If the market had closed out at that level, then we would have made 35,000 Rand on this structure. As it turned out, the closeout level was 45,815, yeah. which is there where that orange dotted line is. And it means that we made 16,694 Rand profit on this structure. But now the key to note here is that 16,600 Rand for us is around about 3% return on capital in our portfolio. But the key thing is that that happened in a time when the market fell by around about 8% mm. from top to bottom. So in actual fact, the outperformance that we've in, we achieved with this thing is significant. We've, we've achieved a 3% positive upside with this structure when the market's given us minus 8%. So it's an 11% outperformance that we've seen on our portfolio over and above the top 40 index. And that is really what's critical here. And, and, and I've always put these option structures in place to give us downside protection in the event that the market does pull back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times these option structures have expired worthless because we've been in a bull market and the market moves up and the structure expires worthless and we lose our option premium. In this case, because the market did pull back, 
it's pulled back into our profitable zone quite nicely. And we've actually made some good money out of this thing. And, and the nice thing was that the premium that we put to pay away on these options was very, very low. So it really has been an effective structure to use in the event of a market correction, which we've just seen. Yeah, so I'm sure you're really chuffed that you actually did put it on for the portfolio because, as you said, it's it's I think only once before that the option structures that you've enacted have actually paid off. Yeah. Um, and I'm really glad that the market, the futures close out wasn't at 49,000 <laughs> because that would have been like yeah. salt in the wound, I tell Definitely, you. Definitely, me too, because that would have been where we would have made our least amount of profit. <laughs> but, you know, I think what's encouraging about this is that these are, these are the type of structures that do kind of lend themselves to a slightly more bearish market. And we've done well on this show in the last nearly six years that we've been doing it. But to be fair, it's been a bull market for, yeah. since 2009. I still believe the difficult times will come for me on this show when we turn into a bear market. And it's encouraging to see these type of structures working in a market that pulls back because I think utilizing these sort of structures more effectively and more regularly in a bear market will probably see us doing quite well in a bear market, actually. Mm. And it's encouraging for me from that point of view. I'm not saying we're about to go into a bear market. I simply don't know. But if we do and we keep using this type of instrument, it's 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 nice that we'll be able to make some money on the downside with this type of structure. And it also gives you the confidence to go out and uh, put other trades on for the portfolio. And I know, mm. and we talk about it repeatedly, is the importance of stop losses mm. because there have been uh, two losing trades with Mediclinic and Capitec. Yeah. Uh, but you stuck to your stop losses and you l limited the, the, the losses that you uh, might have uh, suffered there. Yeah. So that's all kind of come together quite nicely. That's right. Well, there are a couple of things in terms of risk management. You'll also remember that in addition to the stop losses that we employed very effectively on MediClinic and Capitec, we had also actually started taking much smaller positions as we, as we approached the middle of May, knowing that this time of the year can be a bit bumpy in the market. And there were certainly signs out there that we were beginning to look a bit frothy and that we might come down a bit. And uh, so the combination of adhering to smaller, sli smaller sized positions and then adhering to the stop losses on those trades that did go wrong for us definitely stood us in good stead. So it meant that the losses were very well protected. And then, of course, we had this option structure on as well to give us any downside participation. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm really pleased that it worked out for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Looking forwards, um, and you actually have enacted a trade this week, and it's on NASPAS, a long yes, position. Yes, it, it is on NASPAS. And again, I mean, I'm still sticking with the relatively small trades here. We're not doing a big trade here, but nevertheless, I think NASPAS looks quite good, and I'll explain why. There's the chart of NASPAS since uh, well, probably over the last eight months or so, and you can see a gradual upward trend over there. What's interesting, though, is that over the last two months, really, the share price has been tracking sideways mm -hmm. in a range. Now, what I like about this is that obviously NASPAS has been one of the strongest performing shares in our market for a very long time, and it remains a relatively strong outperformer. But in this time recently where the market's pulled back quite hard, this, the share price of NASPAS has actually gone sideways. So on a relative basis, that is telling you that there is actually some relative strength there. Whilst the market's been falling, this share price hasn't fallen. It's gone sideways. And that, to me, almost looks like more of a, a consolidation in time rather than a correction in price that we've seen over there. And what's quite interesting is that the, the share price of NASPAS has actually broken out the top of that trading channel over the last two days, and we're going to talk about that more. But before we do that, I just want to look at this chart of NASPAS and look at it on a line graph. Now, the difference here with the line graph as opposed to the previous graph, which was a bar graph, the line graph just takes the daily close for the share price every day, and it joins the closes with a line. Okay. What's interesting here is notice how that uptrend has held. That uptrend goes back to the October low from 2014, and it joins the December low, and then it comes through again now in June and joins a couple of the recent lows that we've seen over the last few weeks. But see how that uptrend support has held mm. in this environment, which is also quite an encouraging sign. So I put all of these things together. I put the, the good relative strength together. I put that uptrend together, et cetera, et cetera. To me, my feeling is that if this market is to stage a bit of an oversold bounce, which is what it seems to be doing, then I think NASPERS is a relatively good stock to try and take advantage of any bounce in the overall, in the overall market. And I have to say, going back a few years, NASPERS 
did, or certainly before this uh, latest rally, had a tendency to kind of jump up a bit, then consolidate, mm -hmm. and then rally. So that yeah. was often the pattern that you would see with it, NASPAS. It, it is. It's often the characteristic of a very strong stock. They actually, they rise and then they flatline for a while. So they don't really pull back in price. They rather just go sideways in price. And then they find another leg up and go sideways again. I've, I've found that often with very, very strong stocks, and that's what we call a correction in time as opposed to a correction in price. Okay. So, Garth, you have put on a trade for the portfolio. Uh, just talk us through this, some of the, yeah. the details. Yeah, all right. So if we, if we zoom in and look at the hourly graph of NASPERS quickly now, every, every candlestick pattern on this graph represents one hour worth of trade, and this is taken directly off my IG market CFD trading platform. Any, any client of IG can see this on their platform. What's interesting is that the share price has actually now broken out through that sideways channel that we had spoken about. And you can see it quite clearly there. That move through 1,880 is actually a bullish move. Breaks it up into, into you know, a new high or new trading range, as it were. So uh, what I've done is I've gone long on that breakout. The, bra the, the entry level was 1,882 Rand. I'm using a stop loss of 1,850 here, and I'm going to look for a target of 1,950 Rand to sell into. And I think that's a relatively conservative price. We could probably even make a case for a slightly higher projected target based on that uh, sideways pattern. Okay. Uh, and then um, as far as uh, the mechanics of the trade in, in greater detail. All right. So we're going, we're in at 1,882 Rand with a stop loss at 1,850. That means my risk per share is 32 Rand per share. I'm risking 1% of our capital in this case. Now, because we've got about 332,000 Rand in trading capital, that means that I'm allowing myself to risk or i.e. to lose 3,320 Rand if this trade goes wrong. So as we always do, we take the capital risk of 3,320 Rand and we divide it by our risk per share of 32 Rand per share. And that gives me 103 shares. So I'm rounding that down to 100 CFDs. My target is 1,950 Rand, meaning, meaning that my risk to reward ratio is 1 to 2,1. So that's a reasonable risk reward ratio. And my exposure in this case is 188,000 Rand. Mm. I mean, and I suppose the great thing about CFDs is that uh, you can actually get a bigger position to a share like Nasdaq, because yeah. if you had to buy the actual share, you could probably afford one and a half uh, if you were paying down actual uh, cash for the, the whole share. Yeah, look, in this case, I mean, remember, we've got 332,000 Rand at our disposal. We've only taken 188,000 Rand exposure. So we, we could have effectively bought more if we had wanted to actually wanted to but we we do these position sizes based off of the stop loss and yeah. and and all that sort of thing um in order to ensure that we don't lose more than the one percent of our capital if the trade goes wrong okay Carl, so what does the portfolio look like then at the moment so at the moment we've got three hundred and thirty one thousand four hundred and eighty five rand in our account that's up 32 percent for the year to date um, you can see the only open position that we've got right now is this NASPERS trade that we've talked about today. Above here, these are all the trades related to our option structure, which has now closed out. And in the end, as I said, we made close to 17,000 Rand profit on that. And all of those profits are now taken into account with this portfolio value as we have it right now. Okay. Uh, and then your course dates, next ones. Yeah, so I've actually booked a few more courses in the last week, and I've got, I'm going to be quite busy through July and August. Johannesburg, I've got two courses. Cape Town, I've got a high probability trading course on the 15th of August. And then Bloemfontein, of all places. <laughs> I've never, never, ever done a course in Bloemfontein, but I've had a lot of clients saying to me, please come to Bloemfontein. So Bloemfontein, this is your chance to shine <laughs> and to prove me wrong. I've never thought there would be a lot of interest in Bloemfontein, but let's give it a bash. So I'm running a understanding CFDs course on the 21st of August and a high probability trading course on the 22nd of August. And I look forward to seeing as many people as possible there. So anyone that would like to attend any of these courses, please email me, goth at traderscorner.co.za, and I'll email you all the details. You'll have to tweet confirmation that of existence of, uh, of the viewers <laughs> down there, Garth. I will do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there. Thanks, as always, for joining us, Garth. Uh, Garth McKenzie is founder and editor of Traders Corner. Traders Corner was proudly brought to you by IG. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open a trading account today.